Hey guys, welcome back to Casting Commons, the show where we discuss everything pauper. And I am your host, and this is my co-host, the exiled elf himself, Reese. Hello. So, Paul, what have you been up to this week? Um, not a lot pauper wise, unfortunately. We had a small F and M. Um, past that, not I haven't really had much time for for magic, to be honest. Um, mm. I've built up. Uh, reanimator, legacy reanimator on Mordo. Uh huh. Um, because there's a legacy event coming up that I'm gonna try and test for mm-hmm. rather than uh, just doing my normal going blind with zero testing. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna try and run some of that uh, this week and next week, but I don't know how much time I've got for that. Um, and then also playing bits and pieces of EDH, but again, not not even a huge amount of that. Um, some with Reese the Exile though, so that's yeah. it. That leads off that pretty well. Can I say? Uh, have you been doing much recording any videos? Uh, not really. Actually, I have no chance to record anything really this week. I've tested a few brews, running through a couple of time practice, trial by fire with a couple of couple of leagues. Nothing really mm-hmm. too exciting. My my main issue is I'm trying to get a routine. One, well, obviously, if people haven't already seen, I've started writing for Cards Realm, um, which has been quite fun. Been enjoying it, yeah. but it's just obviously. Trying to get in the routine, obviously recording this, recording for leagues, editing, obviously writing as well. So it's just pretty much getting into the groove of things. So hopefully it'll start to normalise over the next couple of weeks. But nothing really too exciting, to be honest. No. Didn't enjoy Ponza that much at the afternoon. No. No, not at all. <laughs> it, uh, you, you live and die by the cascade. You really do. And yeah. whew, God, that was not yeah. my not my day. But- Bowden Pie into Arbor Elf isn't the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been stuck on, um, was it stuck on four or stuck on five with like a bunch of Bowden Pies and Altar Saws in hand or something? Yeah. It was something like that which seemed to be happening a lot. But yeah, it, it was what it was. I'll, uh, I'll stick to gardens, I think, moving forward. <laughs> At least you've got a sideboard guide for that now. Yeah, exactly. From from your very own article. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> on to the stuff that everybody's here for. What happened in the challenges this weekend? I thought Saturday was a bit of a weird one, to be honest. Um, so, well, obviously, the, the top eight. First was black-white mid-range. Mm-hmm. Second was Bogles. Mm-hmm. Third was uh, Gardens, but Splash and White. Mm-hmm. Um, fourth, Flickertron. Fifth, Mono Blue Terror. Uh, sixth, Mono Blue Fear. Seventh, Blue Black Terror. And eighth, Affinity. Um... So the first thing I thought was, there's, there's no Burn. <laughs> burn hasn't top eighted. After winning um, winning both last weekend. Yeah. But, uh... It was uh, definitely an odd one. It was obviously very well represented in the field. Um, I think it was, like, by far the most represented deck. Um, and there was quite a lot in the top 32. Just, I think the closest to top eight was, like, 10th or something. Um... But I think those over fifty percent of the decks, uh, of of the people playing burn top thirty two. Um, but yeah, and there wasn't a lot of mono blue fear either. That was another weird one. There was like hardly any. Um, which I'm not sure why. Yeah, I think going off, um, like the Google Doc of grinders and things. I think it was thirty percent uh, was mono red. And then after that, like, it was absolutely nothing. It was, was it 4%, which is, like, two or three pilots or something, which was mm. terror, was it? Something along those lines? Yeah, yeah. Even um, Affinity was massively reduced from, mm. like, Affinity's normally pretty consistent because you usually get the people that play every week, play every week. Mm. Um, but they just didn't really show up for this Saturday mm-hmm. challenge. Um, yeah. Although still copy in the top eight. I think there was also only two, was it two fair pilots and one top yeah. eight like it's, yeah, yeah. it's so small it was absolutely uh unbelievable to be fair um but yeah i could see terror i think was obviously the second most played deck which i think i had like six or seven pilots if that yeah. um wasn't wasn't massive by any stretch but still got a top eight somewhere and i think to be fair terror being up there in my opinion like being up as a highly represented deck i do think with kuldotha being on the down tick 
I think Terra gets more of a, a solid choice because you just it's a lot easier to the game plan of Terra plus Fangs is a lot more yeah. game winning than it is against Cold Offer. In my yeah, they, they can't just chump it and kill the guy to basically time walk you. Exactly. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Bogles again, obviously, still performing re- ridiculously well, just continuing to make top eights. Um, again, still not not very widely played at all. Mm. Um, but yeah, just consistently top eighting. Um, black white mid range coming first was an interesting one. Um, I haven't seen that in a while. No, mid- it's, it's sort of usually there but it's usually like the lower end of the top yeah. 30 yeah definitely but again I think that's similar to Terror it's a, a deck that gets better the less yeah. cold author and the less creature based I think it actually gets better with you know mm. Lone Mysteries Dawnbringers the lands gain in life it just has you know you can play a Dawnbringer and effectively not quite but you basically they need another spell yeah I think yeah if, if the mono red well for, for this challenge the mono red decks um the ones that were in top 32, there was one that played Cold Author, all the rest were like mm. um, Pinger Burn based. Yeah. So I think if you're playing White Black and you can answer the Pinger, you can beat the Burn clock with life game. Whereas mm-hmm. the like the older style Cold Author decks had that consistent damage every turn, where obviously the if they deal with the Pinger, the, the more Burn style ones don't. So I can say that. So I wouldn't. What what do we think was the reason for basically thirty percent of mono red? Was it? Do we think it was there was everyone woke up this morning and chose violence, or the company bother <laughs> playing, or what? What? I I don't think that's probably that far off from where it's going to end up. I think that's high, mm. but I do think that's probably what we're going to be looking at. Maybe like twenty twenty five ish. Okay. Percent generally every league I think now we're just going to be looking at that percentage or close in that range from twenty to thirty percent of mono red. Do you, um, do you think, I think it's just so accessible, easy to play. Mm. It's really good. Yeah. Um, it it can basically beat any deck, even like the decks that are set up main deck mm-hmm. to beat it. You can still just roll them over. Um. So yeah, I think I think that's probably where we're going to end up. Do you think Whether that's, that's good or not? <laughs> do you think that's even if we do get a lot of adaptions, so you get like your black white mid ranges attuned with main deck missionaries or you know decks with main deck weather and stuff like that? Like, I can see yeah. it's one or the other. You're either going to adapt heavily, like skew even more than we previously were with Cold Author, or mm-hmm. we're going to just have burn mirrors all day every day. Yeah. I- the thing is that the even if the black white mid range deck becomes more of a thing, it's now it's not really that get ever getting that popular to where mm. it will skew the percentage of burn. Yeah. Just because it's not as it's not as easy or quick to play. No. Um, which on Mordo especially is is a big thing. Yeah. Um. And for me personally, I would say it's not as fun to play either. But yeah. I I could see people having fun with it. Um. But yeah, I think obviously the meta will skew. To have main deck here, but I don't think it'll skew enough. Like you see, the mono blue decks running like eight pyro, eight hydro blasts in the mm. sideboards, and a lot of games it's just like the draw five and they still lose. Mm. Um, yeah, in- interesting one for Saturday. Yeah, it was definitely definitely a strange one. The whole percentages just had me like, what have I woke up to? Almost <laughs> just like what the, but um. Yeah, I think Sunday if basically normalised itself somewhat, uh, if you want to start on that, I guess. Yeah, yeah so s- Sunday, first was Gardens, so two top eights in a row from Gardens. Second was Mono White Heroic, which was, I thought, a bit of a weird one, sort mm-hmm. of in that Boggles style slot. Mm-hmm. Um, third was Fams, fourth was White Weenie, fifth was Affinity, and then six through eight were all burned. Which is sort of more what you would expect with the numbers from Saturday. Yeah, that. Uh, but the percentages were all, mm, like normalised, weren't they? About twenty, eighteen percent, something like that. I think. We yeah. Were... So I think, but Burn was still the highest played deck. Um, 
other other decks sort of came back up. So uh, Mono Blue come back to second most played deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, Affinity come back to third most played deck with um, its usual like eight eight to ten players. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Sunday was <laughs> Saturday was definitely an outlier. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, Burn still by far the most represented deck. Actually making top eights this time again. Um, I think only one deck played Kuldorfa in the top 32. All the others didn't. Yeah. Um, and the, the two lists from Saturday and Sunday that were playing Kuldorfa were also playing um, Burning Tree, Burn Tree Emissary. Yeah. Um, which I guess works pretty nicely with the new all the divinations that they've got now. Yeah, definitely. Um, divination into Burning Tree, Burning Tree into Divination. Pretty decent. Are we calling Especially this? Especially if you're playing Bushwhacker. Are we calling this the death of Stompy and Burn <laughs> Mono Red is going to be the uh, the Burn and Tree emissary deck? Yeah, I, well, I suppose especially with that list when you're playing Burn and Trees, Bushwhackers, Cold Offers, um, and Swift Spears, it's sort of getting into that Stompy space, isn't it, really? Yeah. And it does everything Stompy wants to do, but miles, miles, yeah. miles better. And draws a lot more cards. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, um, I did play a league with Stompy the other day, and oh my god, that was terrible. Like that was the worst Magic I've ever played in my entire life. Every single game I played, regardless of the deck, from red base to whatever, was they were twenty cards ahead of me, and I'm still in the top ten. And I'm dying, and I'm like, mm. yeah, this is just yeah. not a good deck. It, not at this moment in time, that is for sure. I think it's it's one of those where it's had the shell for a long time, mm-hmm. but then goes like massive periods without anything good being added to that shell yeah um like you got that um that groff that five four guy that some of them play mm-hmm. but it's like barring that there's like you, you need a really good green creature yeah i think you'll probably um, need another six for it to be playable yeah. to be fair but <laughs> yeah it, it definitely needs some power uh added in the in the future it would definitely make it more playable, I think. But yeah, um, after that sidetrack, sorry. We, uh... <laughs> yeah, it, it, this was obviously a bit more of a normal top eight, but it's got Affinity and Burning. It's got Fams has come back and other gardens, but there's no no Mono Blue, no Terror. Mm. Um, I'm not sure where the closest one was. Um, got these the wrong way around. Uh, so your fair was ninth. Uh, yeah, so there was a ninth place fair, and a tenth place blue. Is that blue black fair? Yeah, by the looks of that. That's a pretty cool one. So yeah, the the fairies are there, just on the edge of the top eight. Um, Terra, there's I think fifteenth was the next. Oh no, that's not even Terra. <laughs> that's Turbo Fog with Terra in. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, a distinct lack of Terra. Especially coming off the sun, uh, the Saturday. Um, was there any terror? <laughs> I'm just scrolling down here. Mm, no, it doesn't seem like it. Yeah, the no. Oh yeah, there was thirty second with adapter. Yeah, one on, snuck in on terror. Which yeah, a pretty big difference from it being essentially two copies in the in the top eight of of Saturday with the mono blue version. Yeah. Um. To only just make the top 32. Mm. Um, the Sunday as well, obviously there's no Bogles. It's, it's been pretty much a mainstay in all of the top eights for weeks now. It just missed on Sunday. There were uh, two or three decks in the top 32. Um, but yeah, unfortunately missing out on the uh, top eight and ruining its consistent results. Yeah, definitely. But again, Mono White Heroics yeah, it's like it's you know ugly cousin. <laughs> it yeah, it's quite quite impressive it's got there. To be fair, with the amount of burn mm. and a, a lot of them, obviously, cut and cold off are now running different burn spells to fit in the gap. A lot of them are running just like main deck for in the festivities and stuff like that. Mm. Um, Which is so you did. I guess that could be why Bogles is now down ticking. Um, maybe the Saturday result was an outlier. Mm. Um, but I suppose given it's sorcery speed the good players will play around it but it, it makes it a lot harder to get, get going you have to be a lot slower when and when you're against Bono Red 
probably not what you want to be doing. But also on a, the other sword for mono wire heroic as well is with the mono red the burn players moving away from Kuldotha, they were also moving mm-hmm. away from Galf Blast. So yeah, Trailblazer just the whole four yeah. just looks so much better. Yeah, definitely, I can see that. And I wouldn't be surprised if the uh, the second place deck literally just went turn one all four GGs. <laughs> Soon as I slap a spirit link on this, you ain't winning. He's pretty much yeah. as good as he gets. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Mull yeah. Mul- to three, I'll do. Yeah. <laughs> the perfect three cards. <laughs> Planes, Trailblazer, Spirit Link. It's all you need. <laughs> Combo. <laughs> um, yeah, two mono white decks, interestingly enough, in the top eight, um, with the white weenie as well. Mm. Um, I, I don't think there was out particularly new about the white weenie list it, it looked pretty stock to me um but yeah just just getting there obviously bags of artifact hit and um burn hit in the sideboard um turns out will be enough i guess yeah well you've got you've got main deck strands as well which obviously definitely yeah. does does some of the uh heavy lifting um, the only thing that strikes out of me is the sunlands i guess but again that's just another yeah, just burn hit card with yeah. the way Burns looking now, with obviously the pingers. Yeah, yeah. It's all the X3s for one mana. Mm. But yeah, fairly solid list. Looks fairly similar to the uh, the list that I think top eighted uh, Popageddon a few months back. Yeah. One for Sogo. So, one for you. Double Gardens, top eight week. Oh, this is what I, I am feeling. This is what I'm here for. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slowly take credit for this and say, obviously. My article coming out on Saturday morning was what inspired everybody to play Gardens. They used your sideboard guys. Oh yes, even though none of them had anywhere close to the list I was running. The uh, the Saturday one was a bit wild, it was like a Abzan Gardens, but it was only splashing white for, is it three circular protections? One blue, one black, yeah. one red, I think it was. Yeah, I've seen that, it was a, an interesting one. Because um, it just had the white off. Was it the bounce lands? Yeah, the bounce lands and treasures, I think. And treasures, yeah, yeah, and treasures. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, black, black, blue, red. So I guess yeah. Terra, mono red, also sort of Terra, I guess. The black. Yeah, um, I, next time. I guess yeah. you can prevent your own crit rats, can you? The next time a black source of your choice would deal damage to you. This, t- yeah, yeah, you can stop taking damage from your own crit rats, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But definitely a, an interesting list. The uh, the Saturday one, the Sunday one was the I believe it was the si- it could be the same pilot, if not the um, same list as the guy that we when we highlighted the gardens list. Oh, last with, week. Yeah, with the visionaries. Uh, was it last yeah. week or the week before? Yeah, yeah. Because um, it's one with a lot more visionaries in the main deck with the uh, yeah and the one, infections. Yeah. So definitely a sweet list. the The numbers still baffle my head, but Gardens plays. Uh, yeah, especially the Saturday ones is stacked with the one of instant. Yeah. One one disfigure, one pulse, one suffocating fumes, one fangs, one wilt, and one debt to cami all in the main. Yeah. I, I'm a big fan of these one ofs. You know, the, is it the Tom Ross special? As it was, you only need <laughs> you only one. Need one. <laughs> Like I'm I all... think when you can when you can churn through the cards like gardens yeah. can, yeah, it, it yeah it, they do pay off. Um, you see that mu- that many cards each game, it's just yeah you, you can you can do that. Yeah, so the Saturday one kind of makes sense to me. Uh, like mm. uh, you know, four wellsprings, four deadly boot, four bargains, and a bunch of one offs, and that that's basically all you need. I, and I like the spice with the the splashing colours. Like I've. I've thought not necessarily white, but I've thought about splashing other colours, and and always just felt, can you really successfully do that with like say blue yeah. or black uh, or red? Sorry for like powerfulish sideboard cards, yeah. um, but the 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 winning list on Sunday just still baffles my brain. Like I can't <laughs> understand why why go for one bar uh, one reckless bag and only one wellspring and things like yeah. that, but it works. It's, it's definitely a lot more on the um, the old ramp into um, Avenger Point of Plan, isn't it? Like, yeah. I guess with the, with the visionaries, um, turn three, the visionary turn four hundred is is probably one of its close, like more focused plans. Mm. 
but yeah, one wellspring definitely is a is an odd one. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely down for all the all the card choices though. Like I really do like the spinning darknesses. Going up to three, that's great. Uh, seems a bit of an odd choice when you're going up to more green cards as well. But mm. you know, if you can cast it for free, that's great. I'm I'm definitely down for that. I like the Ravens crime even in the sideboard. It's an interesting one, but I'm definitely here for it. It can um, obviously has some utility, but another interesting thing was two two duress in his in the main. And mm. um, like split two of the main two on the side, um, which I, I, if if Bernie's a thing, it's it's definitely a good tool yeah. to have. Yeah, yeah. Um, so maybe that's a sort of angle, and then obviously like the Saturday one, splash and white for the circles, and this one splash and red for a couple of gorilla shamans in the side, just to give you a bit more uh, leverage against affinity. Yeah, and it's got the grotto there to cast it, mm. which is uh which again, I'm, I've been impressed with Grotto to be fair, so yeah, as a card, I'm... I suppose when you're running running the bounce lands, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> when you're running the, the bounce lands, you get the like reoccurring value from it. It's pretty good. Yeah, you definitely do. Sorry, the uh, the dogs just come in. Oh, and she's out again. I'm, le I'm left. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But... So, hey, have you got any more on that? No, I don't. Again, I'm just buzzing. Two, two copies over the weekend will do me that's all I want <laughs> Gardens is a way of life it is not a deck choice it is definitely uh, some good results you're either in or out though <laughs> yeah so do you want to move on to your highlighted deck from this Saturday yeah definitely uh, this one I, I kind of cheated a little I'm not going to lie the deck I have chose is Black White Gates uh, yeah. from Kirby I think it came 19th I think I'll uh, just double check. Um, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he, did, yeah. He came 19th. Um, so, yeah, I did, I did cheat a little bit. Um, Kirby, shout out to this guy. He, crazy man for trying this deck. And I'm definitely kudos to him. So, I dropped him a line. Obviously, asked him about his thoughts about this deck and his card choices and things. So, I did cheat a little bit. Um, it looks sweet. It is like a recommission unearth kind of deck with breathless knight um that also uses basilisk gate obviously just close the game but it also just runs a lot of solid card choices you know core sky fisher sacred cat thraben inspector all these cards you can't really go wrong with um prismatic strands cast down again all these cards that you would expect to see in like a white or a black based deck and then it's just jammed some gates in and then also like an unearth recommission breathless knight package as well yeah, and it worked. Obviously, he did fairly well. Um, one thing that he he did tell me was he was messing around with this deck for a while, and it didn't have crit rats in. Um, mm. And when he was trying like a green black based gate deck, uh, it had crit rats in, and he really enjoyed the interaction with Bass's gate. Okay, so yeah, I really did enjoy this deck, um, and the interactions that he's obviously come up with. Um, there is a couple of like numbers, I guess. Um, Sacred Cat doesn't work with Breathless Knight, unfortunately. Ah, it makes a token rather yeah. than actually brings it back, yeah. Yeah, but Unearthing, Recommissioned Breathless Knight is obviously a great interaction. Obviously a Vigilance, I believe it's got Vigilance anyways. Vigilance and Lifelink. Oh no, Flying and Lifelink, sorry. Flying and Lifelink, yeah. Solid yeah, card. The scrap, the scrap work mutt as well, just getting the essentially the free Unearth off um, your gate. So you just pick pick red on a gate yeah. and not, not having to actually play it seems really good. Yeah. Um and obviously yeah, just working with working with the Breathless Knight package. Um and just being like a fairly decent guy. Mm -hmm. Um on its own. You can you've got plenty of stuff to discard. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Very uh definitely definitely that's good. Um he will have a he also has told me, shameless plug, that he will have a write up on this deck on his <laughs> channel, just to let you all know. So go check that out if you do are interested in this deck. So, anyways, going on to your deck, what was your choice for the Saturday? So, mine was actually one of the decks from the top eight. It was the Mono Blue Error list, um, which I just thought was really, really cool, but really interesting take on on the Terra archetype. Hmm. Um, it's something that when Terra came out, in, or when it was even previewed, to be fair, we were looking at um, 
blue red and mono blue list yeah. as well as the blue black um and it just yeah takes it in an interesting way replaces the gurmag with um serpentine curve as another yeah. big bomb um which yeah it, it seems like a really solid bomb um artful dodge was another one two artful dodge in the main which is a, a blue sauce one one blue for a sorcery and um, makes tag creature unblockable and has flashback for a blue um, so you can mill it and still then just unblockable your 10 10 serpent or your or your terror um, and get in and then obviously replacing or, or trying to compete with all the two mana draw spells um, like deadly dispute like the um, Ren's resolve and reckless impulse with uh, your own frantic infantry and accumulate knowledge both four of um, which also just you mill them with your thoughts, scour your cast one, it's got the bonus. It seems a, a really cool way of going about it. Yeah. Um, creatures for Terra, for Delver. The Delver's almost always living on the blind because you've got 27 instants and 8 sorceries. Yeah. Um, and I think especially at the moment where there's, there's that much burn the not having to have turns where you're just playing a tap land to try and activate your black mm. is just super, super good so just 17 islands no need for jewels no need for any anything else you're just always untapped you can cast all your cantrips and your cow spells on time um, and then fit your threats in around that yeah it's definitely a, a solid archetype and I've definitely seen a few lists previously I'm talking turbo initiative days from Terra that sort yeah. of um, and they're definitely the creatures were, were definitely a lot weaker and I do like the serpentine curve they were running yeah. say most of my scene was spire golem kind of which is obviously a lot weaker um, than a giant token Jets now. yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but yeah it's definitely a, a, a solid deck uh, the pull that I seen originally turbo fog days was your your um, foil was an option because obviously you've got so many yeah. blue cards so many islands but yeah for the free cover which obviously was a pull a really big pull to play foil in like turbo initiative kind of days but going back to like yeah. spell pieces and count spells and dispel uh, just solid and be, as you say being able to cast them on time is definitely mm. definitely great it's uh yeah I think, I think that's the big thing is you just never like every turn you can just cast your spells assuming you hit your land drops which uh, you've got a lot of cantrips yeah. Um, so you should be fine. I found like when I played the blue black terror, you've got turns where you're like, right, I want to cast this cantrip, but I also want to hold up count spell, but my land's tapped, mm. and it just always feels feels pretty awkward, um, because it does run what the eight full eight, ATB tap jewels. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's an interesting way to, to go about it. Um. Obviously, the only big negative I can see is the frantic infantry accumulate knowledge package is also just really bad against graveyard hate which is good against terror yeah um but you do have that um serpentine curve which also does it, it counts exile yeah right? it does yeah so it's basically anti anti graveyard hate so there is an angle there but I can see it still being awkward against all the Nihil spell bombs that are now knocking up in Affinity main decks. Yeah, that, and that, and that's one of the big issues I, I think for that deck, and it's probably is the card draw package. You obviously gain everything's untapped, but being a two mana draw one is not good, especially if they if they're having yeah. graveyard hits. So maybe there's something else. Maybe the idea is future, like down the line, you might see Ponder Preordain instead of that slot, mm. but. Unsure, it, it definitely works. Like you have like obviously nice angles where you can thought scar one away as you say and AK and get two cards out of it. I think that's the biggest thing is you can just set up your brainstorms and thought scours or just blind thought scours and mental notes and it's not the worst. Like mm -hmm. if it's hitting these these cantrips because your next ones are just better. Yeah. Um but yeah, cool deck. Definitely, definitely um, cool. Glad it's glad it's done well. Yeah, that uh, is so Sunday, some more gardens you pick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I couldn't not. I'm sorry. Uh, basically, the gardens that came, like, it's more both of them, to be fair. Yeah. I feel like we have dived into it a little bit, but 
it is effectively I couldn't notch out off Gardens. Gardens done incredibly well over this weekend. Um, the yeah, main, it was impressive. Um, I'm all for it. As uh, it is definitely not a deck choice. It is a way of life. I I am a Calney Garden player at heart now, um, and it's just it's a fairly solid deck at the moment. And I think overall it is literally just because these card choices are you, you have so much freedom to after the shell of Calney Garden Deadly Street Reckoner's Bargain, basically blue tacking and gluing all these decks together is basically the the best way to to go about it. You've got Avenger Hunter closes out games. You know, Crip Rats does obviously all, all what you need it to do. Um, and all the removal is just fantastic. Like, I can't... Uh, there, there's nothing really else to say about it, apart from, like, it is re a really well-positioned deck overall. You've got access to free removal in Spin and Darkness and Snuff Out. You've got great choices of removal spells in like, Kasten, in Chainer's Edict and Castan, which kind of clean up the rest of the way. And you've got a powerful finisher in terms of Avenger Hunter. Like the the deck is is a solid solid choice. And as you've seen by both decks, you don't have to be green black. We just do not have to be green black. It, it's white sideboard cards also work. You know, you red sideboard cards. Red yeah. sideboard cards work also on the Sundays. There's a cool one I seen Lujo play, which was I can't. I'm not even going to remember the name, but it is a black. Uh, Merfolk from Shadowmoor, I believe it is, and it's kind of like a relic of Progenitus. It's called like Merrow River Street, but it's literally tap, nice. tap, exile a card from your graveyard whenever you cast a black spell, untap it. And all right, cool. And I see that card, and I'm like, this card <laughs> is what I want. I don't need no relics. I don't need no spell bombs. This is my card choice. It was a solid, solid card choice. It's turbo relic, turbo relic, and it's a dude. Yeah, worst yeah, yeah. just. Pitch it away, and you've still probably done some form of exile, and like so another another option for other card choices. So the the deck for both Saturday and Sunday both impress me, and both have pros and cons to each. And I'm definitely definitely here for it. It'll be interesting to see where it sort of goes from there. Obviously, all gardens list are, are fairly different, mm. um, but if we see any next week, it'll it'll be interesting to see what sort of path the uh, the take. Yeah. Definitely. And what is your deck choice for Sunday? So mine is Luffy's Affinity deck. Um, given the top eight in both <laughs> events, I feel like we should def definitely mention it. Um, I think it was the exact same list both days as well. Um, but yeah, it, it's they've obviously been tuning it a lot for the meta that is mm -hmm. occurring at the moment. Um, like looking at, at the main deck you can tell with main deck breath weapons main deck four on a hill spell bombs a um, couple of negates it's sort of leaning into beating what's good which is really where affinity tends to to thrive um, yeah just a stellar performance both days um, and probably setting the sort of path for what affinity decks are starting to lean into which is like tuning themselves even harder to be like mono blue, mono red, um, and terror, and um, just aiming for those decks because your core is that good, you can beat everything else. Yeah, definitely. That as as it is, just generally in part of the moment, the the decks are just deadly dispute reckoners bargains. Those kind of decks just a, a good glue to any sort of engine. The, the engine's so powerful and. It works obviously harmoniously with um, Affinity. Obviously, it just progresses your game plan, anyways. So, and yeah. you have that slot to just negate breath weapon, whatever you, whatever you need to to fight the meta game. And these sideboard, like these sideboard cards, being main deckable in Affinity is just great. Obviously, spell bomb is fantastic yeah. at the moment and free, basically. Yeah, you can obviously sack it away to to your dispute or your bargain, and then still play the bot pay the black and, and have the extra card um, and there's so many decks where it just even just eating like some lava darts against burn um, and obviously against terror it's just there's, there's value everywhere mm. um, some interesting numbers that he was running one Kenku um, 
obviously I, I've been pretty high on Kenku, but he, he doesn't think it's as necessary, I guess, right now. Um, and then one Chainers and one Thoughtcast I thought were quite interesting inclusions as well. Um, obviously, Thought Thoughtcast used to be a core of the deck. It's obviously been very much displaced by Dispute and Bargain. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's cool there. Cyborgs <coughs> barely stop the um, blue blasts, red blasts, um, some more two damage and minus two, minus two in arms and breath weapon, um, and then some fangs and a couple of negates for extra extra burn beating potential. Yeah, I, um, I do like the. I do like, as I say, just having these one of numbers, like maybe not the forecast, it's just, I guess, the ninth bargain. Um, yeah. But one chain is obviously just a good out for everything. And I guess Kenku's kind of. I feel like when I think about Affinity, and maybe this is just me, when I'm looking at a deck that I'm playing, it seems to either worry about the recursiveness of Blood Fountain, like answering the multiple all these threats multiple times, or it's having an out to Kenku. And yeah. if your deck, if other decks are prepared for this, like having other outs for Kenku, it just makes it that worse. So it's nice to have one just as a catch-all. You're gonna find it anyways. You draw your entire deck by turn yeah. five anyways. So I think with the the former enforcer for four gear seekers in the in the main as well, it's it's pretty much set. We're gonna win with these eight cards. Yeah. So I guess you don't you don't really need that much else. Yeah. Um. Especially when you can just recur them with blood fountains if you're an out. Yeah, definitely. But it's definitely a solid list, and I and I think it's a a good one to hold on to, like keep in your back pocket for any affinity players. You know, yeah, it's... great list, and obviously great results. Top eight in both side yeah. down Sunday. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, very good. And um, so, if we go on to our recap of what what we said last week that we thought would have happened, um. So our first point was an uptick in Bogles representation. Now, obviously on Saturday that didn't happen at all. Um, Bogles still top eighted, but there was only two people playing it. <laughs> um, there was a slight uptick on Sunday. Um, there was five five Bogles, but yeah, obviously missed missed the top eight. Um, so I think we probably whiffed on that one, to be honest. Yeah. I I think it's just gonna get you're just gonna get the same two or three pilots playing it, and they're just gonna do well with it. I think we just need to accept that. Bogles yeah. is a, it's probably okayly positioned, but it's known being really good with Bogles and also known when to go in at things. And I think those pilots are just gonna stick to it. Yeah, I'd say. Uh, um, our second point was an uptick in Ponza. I think, How'd you feel about that one? <laughs> yeah. Well, it was the third most played deck on Saturday, but that's because no other deck was played by red. Yeah. That's that's the claim to fame, but we definitely uh, definitely took the L on that one. We um it just disappeared. It, I think it did it top it six had a really obviously had a really good week last week. Mm. Um probably better than anyone would have ever expected. Um but yeah, just completely fell off yeah no, um, no there, there was a couple a couple of decks in the top 32 on saturday um but i don't think there was any on sunday mm. so yeah there's big whiff people didn't like to roll the dice on the sunday or no. the saturday <laughs> oh well um our third one was um the burn list will start becoming more streamlined more focused um and obviously keep cutting pulled over the, um which this seemed pretty true. Um, both days there was one list each day that had cold offering, um, and all all the rest didn't. With I think eight, both eight or nine, both days in top mm. thirty two. Um, so it, it definitely seems like that's the way it's gone currently. Um, obviously there was the the one deck each day that did quite well. Um. Playing called offer. I think one was thirteenth. I'm not sure what the other one was. Um, with the called offer and the burn and tree package, so that might be a, like a second route where the the burn deck now diverges into two paths, where it's sort of more 
old school burn and then sort of a more like stompy cold off rebuild. Um, so that should be interesting to see what happens next week. Yeah, because that's what that's what we all need is two really good red decks that <laughs> are really different, and you need two different sideboard strategies for both. Because that is what we need. Yeah, I mean when they just reprint Reckless Impulse with a different name, it's sort of it's yeah, well, get, isn't no, it? Well, yeah, that is very true. <laughs> Next set we'll have Lightning Bolt, but it'll just be called something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, another thing that we need. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it, it's it's fine being like I said, I'm two two decks, one deck being the most common one at the moment. As you say, there was only one of each called author, but it'd be interesting to see how that develops next. Yeah. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, obviously with them playing the burning trees as well, it's obviously a bit of a testing testing ground for something a bit new. Yeah, and it it seemed to work. The the did place fairly well in the top thirty two. Um. Obviously, the, the theory behind it with the all the, the two drop card draw with Chain and Burn and Trees seems good. Mm. And you've got Bushwhacker to sort of capitalise on that value. So, be interested, interesting to see where it goes. Yeah, definitely. Um, our fourth point was um, Gates decks play more black. Um, although there wasn't many Gates decks. No. So, I don't know how we can. I don't think we're getting a, a fair representation on this, but also they didn't really play black. Yeah, the, there was, what, four over the both challenges, and there was one which yeah. was Kirby's list, which was a completely different, like, I was more meaning, like, the green-white shells playing black. So, yeah. again, just a big whiff. It's I don't understand why, though, because I do feel like most of the, the red is basically sideboard cards or, you know, like, some sort of removal. And I do just feel the black... You just gain a bit more off the black, but it seems to be working for them with the red. So yeah, I guess the red the red sideboard cards are obviously pretty powerful, mm. um, especially with mono blue and Terra being pretty high in um, representation. You get the blasts, um, to a pick pretty big draw, and then the the removal is usually sort of what lightning bolt flame slash. Mm. Um, so I guess it's how good you think they are and again at the moment they, they do seem pretty good um, answering the, like the flame slashes answering the two mana pingers and the swift spears even yeah. through like multiple spells yeah, yeah. Um, is pretty good I guess my big thing I, the only thing I can really like the big pull I guess is them being one mana is pretty important when you're yeah. Like you know, mostly all lands come and play tapped. Turn two, being yeah. able to answer a pinger is pretty important. Yeah, I suppose that's that is a big thing where you you play a tapped gate on turn one, um, on red, and then at least turn two you can you can cast the removal and play another tapped gate. Yeah. Um, so you're not going to be taking too much damage from either the swift spear or a pinger or a, a fairy or a ninja type thing. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we'll we'll have to see how that one develops if if more black gets brought in. But yeah, as you say, there was very little gates representation, um, with two decks each each day in the top top yeah. thirty-two. Definitely. Um, and our last one from last week was a a mono blue downtrend. <laughs> on the, this was more of a hope than a than an expectation, um, or at least more variety. Um, there, there obviously was a huge downtrend on Saturday. But I'm not really sure why. There was a, there was a downtrend in everything. It it, it's yeah. just, it was just like a an outlier that it was basically everyone played red and then there was like three or four pilots playing a couple of decks yeah. kind of thing. It was just a bit everyone was just busy. Yeah, wanting to get the games out quick. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, back back to normal on Sunday. Back in its second place, just behind the uh, the red decks in in terms of representation. Um, didn't top eight, but came ninth. Yeah. Um, so still de- putting decent results up. So I don't think that's uh, there's any downtrend happening anytime soon on that. I think it's pretty pretty solidly the second best deck at the moment. Yeah. Um, behind the red decks. That is for sure. Um, whether that changes now, people are starting to prey on it more with like the affinity decks playing the main board, main board breath weapons and such. Mm. If if affinity does go. 
more in a direction that is very hateful to Mono Blue. Yeah. Um, I guess it could downtrend, or if the um, Terra again sort of starts to trend back up as a blue deck. But yeah, I think I think in general it's just it's probably going to sit as the second most played deck. And people love Spellstar. People like winning yes. with Spellstar for some reason. They just have no souls, and they don't like fun. Clearly, there was sort of that period where it was sort of Spellstar was the best thing ever. And people were sort of muttering about banning it, and then it sort of disappeared. Yeah. And then no, we're bad. now in the period where it's now back, and it's probably the second best deck. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, comes in waves. Lost any of its power, yeah. No. Comes in waves. That's all I can say. Uh, uh, so, our f- have you got anything else to say? No, about? no. I was just, I, I was just about to move on. That was all. <laughs> Go for it. I'll let you take control. <laughs> so, wh- what do you think our expectations for next week will be? What do you think it will be? I think. I, th- I think my first one is something we've sort of touched on there before, um, but affinity lists, sort of following Luffy's lead and and putting in those cards that are, are more tuned to the meta. Now it is settling down to well. Excluding the sat- the weird side, <laughs> um, it's settling down to be mono red, mono blue, terror are the decks that you want to aim for as as an affinity player. Um, yeah, I, I think those those cards like breath weapon, like nihil spell one, um, like negate will will slide into the main deck more. Yeah, I think that's a that's a solid solid one. There's no reason no reason not doing it, and we might actually get an uptick in players potentially. Picking it up, yeah. seeing the new kind of shell, so we would like to keep an eye on that one for next week, definitely. Um, I think my my thing, I do think black white decks will probably increase presence wise, yeah. not necessarily performance wise, because I just think with the win from Saturday, um, with them pe- seeing how there might be two possible red decks, mm. I do think it's probably got the best chance. To fight against both, just by its main deck, you know, with potentially like Dawn bring as lone missionaries, missionaries in the main. Um, you've got initiative, which is also relative, which is good against affinity, anyways. Um, and then you've obviously got like access to fumes and other sort of removal spells for the stompy style of red. So, I think especially when you see the the Sunday result with the triple burn top eight, mm. the the first point. Way like all right, what can I play to take advantage of this? Is probably big life game deck. Yeah. Um, which black white is obviously probably one of the the top choices in that. So I can definitely see it sort of swinging up, especially next week. Mm. Um, in a bid to sort of hit on on those burn decks. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's that's what I'm hoping for. I do think the time consideration is a big issue. Obviously, it is quite a long yeah. grindy deck. So that that is the only downside I can see putting people off is some people just aren't equipped to close the game out quickly if, if needed. So what is your next point? Uh, I have on here burn will start to solidify. So that sort of we 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 have touched on that, but the the burn base list rather than the cold offer base lists for both days weren't all um they weren't all that similar there was a lot of slots with fireball slab of darts skewer the critics lava spikes that were sort of changed between each one um it seemed like no one was certain where they should be how how old school burn they should be how sort of focus on the board burn they should be um so with with the two cold off a list sort of splitting off as their own thing um, I think the more burn based ones will start to solidify those numbers um, and there'll be a bit more consistency between um, the lists that you see in the top 32 um, they'll find the, the sort of sweet spot between those those cards and, and how many of each card yeah I can I can definitely see that because obviously you think about it last week or sorry the first week they were playing testing out range resolve it was just a general test Second week, they realised Cold Author's not where it is, Pingers is where it is, 
and then now you're on her. This week where you kind of ping is definitely it, but it's like finalising these last numbers, and then hopefully then again that, that should be the next step and stone in the next week is you are the they've solidified oh they've tried the end of festivities they've tried the lava darts they've tried the fire bolts and they'll get an idea of which is better for what yeah so i, I can see that it's like the natural progression of red moving on i fireball i thought specifically from when i've tested with it with this new eight divination deck um you get a lot more lands in play because you draw that many mm. more cards so the flashback is is pretty legitimate on Fireball. The only downside is is the sorcery speed is still like a big drag on it. Um, but yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see where we where we stand with numbers next week, and how if if there are burn in the top thirty two, which I definitely expect it to be, how close the lists are in terms yeah. of those numbers. Yeah, definitely. You wanna finish on your final? Yeah, Lord. so got to go off the wall. Got to just throw someone out there. <laughs> I think Tron will see an uptick. Don't know what, don't know what version. I can see Monster Tron. I can see Flicker Tron. Um, I do think Alter Tron. If we weren't stuck with the MTGO interface, I do think Alter Tron's probably one of the best decks. Yeah. Um, and it seems to just disappear off the face of the earth, and then a, pay, a large paper event like Pop Again happens, and it wins. Generally, is what happens. So, unfortunately, time is a big issue on Magic Online, so Altatron probably won't be the uptick. But Monstertron seems fairly solid with, obviously, the Golem and things like that that we touched on last week. It's pretty solid against Red. Uh, its threats are too big for Fear, generally. So, they're like, they've, they've basically lost four counter spells from Spells to a Sprite. Um, you... So that seems like a solid choice, which I do think is probably well positioned. And I do think Flickertron having access to weather and all sorts of five colour nonsense again is probably a solid choice. It's just if people actually do pick it up, and I do think they are well positioned, so mm. I can see them taking an up, uptick in percentages again, not necessarily results. Yeah, I think that's something we, we didn't quite touch on, but on Saturday, the 8th place deck was actually um, like a Flickertron mm. style deck. Um, so it is it is putting the results up. Um just not there's not a lot. Um it's a bit like Bogles where it, it'll put a not quite a top eight result but a, a very close to top eight result up. Yeah. Um but that's pretty much the only Tron deck of the day. So Yeah, but yeah, I can see that, especially after that one that one coming eighth as well. Yeah. Um it's definitely some incentive there showing the deck is, is very viable. Um, if you're willing to click you know yeah and uh, usually people like Tronlands in Pauper don't know what it is yeah. but people like it so any excuse to see any sort of Tron result that they generally latch onto it so hopefully we do see an uptick because I don't I think Monster Tron's actually quite a fun deck so I do hope they pick up that I don't like playing against Flicker Tron but it's one of those uh, um, as well it's fairly straightforward and you mm. can like how Burn you can just pick up and jam out the game. Yeah. You can sort of do a similar thing with the Monster Tron. Mm. Um, I guess on continuing on that Tron point, probably something we should have mentioned, the the 8th place Tron from Saturday also came 11th on Sunday, um, piloted by, by the same guy, Arklin21. Um, so, yeah, again, some, some decent results with a deck that's not, not widely played. Mm. Um, and just got the the mystical teachings package, one Din Rover, one Seagate, um, and then flickering away. Yeah, the fun gameplay of Tron into mystical teachings into there goes your mind numbing game. There goes fifty minutes of your life. I think especially if you if you are inclined that way and skilled like skilled with this deck, mm. it's. It, probably a good time to be on a teaching's sort of shell yeah and um, because you can have those tech cards in your main deck and then find them and um, so you can have the breath weapons against fear you can have like the pulses or the um weathers yeah against burn um and then you can easily find them yeah definitely it's it's definitely a good time 
with the meta being like it is to have these main board cards like like Luffy's shown with Affinity having yeah. access to them in the main is definitely a solid choice and having them in your main anyways and being able to search for them is an even better thing definitely do you have anything I'm good that's all yeah. I want to say yeah and that is me too so guys thank you for listening you have been here with Cast and Commons and do not forget to stay hydrated <laughs>